Yes, Jeep is its Green Dot 319. Welcome to the great outdoors. Today, we're gonna to look at driving the Jeep, okay? So as you can see, the thing can drive, which is excellent news. So I brought it out to the middle of nowhere in Somerset and I've got all my tools. <laughs> we're not ready to uh, venture without a whole toolkit. Well, most of a toolkit at the moment currently. So uh, still in the stages of getting this thing shaken down and working properly. And we're gonna look at that. We're gonna do some drives, some acceleration and see how it's behaving. Now then, so the first thing to talk about since last time is I've swapped over to an original carb. Now I put on one of my own rebuilt ones and um, yeah, it's running really nicely with this. The Joe's was very good and it is an excellent carburetor. We'll look at that, we'll take it apart and we'll discuss it in detail. But uh, this one's gonna have a original World War II carburetor on it, which is what's on there at the moment. Just getting shaken down at the moment and sorted out. Jeep's running really nicely. Um, we'll look at how the gearbox is currently working because it's not working perfectly and we've got to sort that out but uh, the engine's behaving really nicely currently right should we have a play with this thing then so listen out for the engine so carb's not totally set up yet there's just a touch of hesitation and then Try and listen out for the transmission as well. There's all sorts of rumbling things in the back here, but um, yeah, we're just gonna see what's going on and what it's like to drive then. So let's get her into gear. Let's wait for these people. Right then, so you can hear. Nice, isn't it? That was with fr throttle off there, so my foot was off the throttle. That was it, just it creeping forward on its own. Okay. So, right, you ready? Yeah, quite something, hey? It, it just leaps off. It's incredible. So, yeah, it's really healthy jumping there. Um, first into second that was. Now, oh hello, there's a good audience. Now it's, um, it might seem like the uh, the second gear is fine there, but the synchros on the second and third just aren't right. They're not behaving correctly, okay? You can't really tell it there, but I can feel it. So I'm gonna have to drop the transmission on that. Tass have missed, dropped the ball there with the synchro rings, but let's have more of a drive then. Back into first. Right, you ready? Bits. Great. So if you try to change down into second without double D clutching, you're going to hear it. We're quite slow now. I'll slow down even more though. Ready? Yeah, it does not like it. That's double D clutching there. So, you know, we, we got a problem with those synchros. They should do that easily. PSI, 140 degrees. You can see, it wants to pull to the left quite hard there on the brake. Haven't got the, um, haven't got the shocks mounted yet. And it dips and it wants to pull really hard left. So it's quite, yeah, you've got to get those shocks on there. It's quite dangerous that. But hey, brakes work. You can't really hear the uh, transmission. You can't hear the differentials or the transmission. There's no clunking either as to sort of you come on and off the power, which there would be if you had, you know, play in the differentials and the prop shafts and the tra transfer case. So you just don't get that with this. It's great. So the, other than the synchros, the transmission seems to be fantastic. You know, there's instant, instant change with no noise whatsoever. Yeah, it just cruises along. Let's come to a stop and then just see how the engine idles from driving, so. There you go. So we've just been driving.
so it's not, you know, sputtering. Not sputtering or doing anything weird straight away from going from hot driving to just suddenly stopping. So that's really nice. It, the, the engine is really sweet. I mean, see the carb's still got a bit of hesitation there. I think it's the acceleration pump. It's fine once it gets past that first bit, so I might have to have a little play with it. But um, you can't really notice, but. The steering isn't properly set up yet, so I haven't got the shocks mounted and then the steering itself I'm not getting on with the worm which is in it I don't think it's quite right I mean it looks fine obviously it's holding straight now but as soon as you go off you start to get quite a lot of play and I know you're supposed to with Jeep steering boxes you know that's the way the rust box works but this is too much for me it's not quite right and it, it's not it's not the best it's not as good as the GPW was so I might have to take the steering box out and change the worm over I think it'll be different when I have the shocks on and it's got more stability. These springs are really soft, like really soft, much, much, much softer than the GPWs. And that's gonna affect the steering, obviously, especially, you know, with, a, with the sort of the way the steering works on a Jeep. You know, where it dips and it changes, you know, it pulls to the left when it dips and things like that. You can see, I can change gear into reverse Things like that, it's, it's very, very nice gearbox. Apart from those synchros. Right, you ready? I mean, look at that. Awesome, hey? Right, double D clutch. And off again. Bouncy. You've got to be careful driving too fast on these bouncy roads without the steering properly set up, without the shocks. woman walking her dogs in a car. Hmm. Okay, well, so that was pretty cool, wasn't it? I mean, the Jeep's doing what it's supposed to do, which is great. So I'm really pleased with it. Let's, uh, let's drive back. Just enjoy this bit of driving in a brand new Jeep. Not without its problems, but pretty good. So I'll keep quiet now. <laughs> <laughs> 